Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Rotowire Fantasy Soccer Podcast. My name is Andrew Laird, Senior Soccer Editor of Rotowire. Joining this Thursday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, by Jordan Cooper to talk about Saturday's Premier League slate. Jordan, this is quite a way to bring 2021 in. Yeah, it seems like uh, it seems like someone at DraftKings said, I want to get to my New Year's Eve party early, so let's just smash the, some numbers, and whatever happens, happens. And apparently... You're going to be paying a premium in order to play on new, on Saturday. Stop me if you've heard this before. Pricing feels a little high. A little? <laughs> a little high? <laughs> a little high? Um, so we, I tweeted this before, but like uh, we were talking about how last week, if you looked quickly at the pricing, you saw that 9700 was the most expensive player. And you were like, oh, pricing's kind of loose. But then it turned out that kind of everybody was was expensive. Um, Ninety seven hundred is the eighth highest price on this slate. And then you're like, OK, well, if you didn't already look at the slate, you're like, it must be Man City against uh, some sort of youth team, uh, Liverpool against the fourth place team from um, Yugoslavia, which doesn't even exist anymore. And then, um, you know, Chelsea against um, the uh, FC Dallas Academy squad. But no. We have three. I actually think this slate could have been great, um, particularly for like ways that we play where we like these low scoring, like high floor slates. Um, but nope, they're just I, I don't even know where to go. Well, you're going to have to. Well, you're going to have to pay up for these floors because that's you have no other choice. You're you're at, you're actually paying up for basements, too. <laughs> yeah, you're you're paying up for a range of outcomes. Uh, four points to uh, to nine points. I mean, like, <laughs> like right. you're not even paying that much for for a ceiling, because we have games this slate. I mean, this typically is my type of slate. Mm-hmm. It's a three game slate, obviously three staggered start times, so that always sucks. But it's low totals. The highest total is two and a half. Okay, which is the Arsenal game. Arsenal are minus one fifty eight away favorite to West Brom, with a two and a half total. Then we have Crystal Palace is a plus 101 home favorite against Sheffield, which is a two and a quarter total. And then Brighton is a marginal plus 171 favorite at home against Wolves. And that's a two total. So I'm thinking here going, okay, don't have to worry all my, about, about goals. Let me jam in my set piece takers, get some cheap fullbacks and, some, you know, an attacking winger for 4K, and I'm good to go. Let people try to run me down with uh, with uh, the, the, the forwards or whatever, and then I look and I go, holy crap. <laughs> like, I, um, I, 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 I guess someone has to loan me some money in order, to, in order to put together a lineup. I put together a lineup before that had two minimum price defenders and the cheapest starting goalkeeper, although I've learned... Uh, earlier this week that I should probably just play backup goalkeepers uh, after Sam Johnstone got me minus five and a half, I think, earlier this week. Um, so I spent 5000 total on defense, uh, whatever the cheapest goalie is, 4200 I think, and I uh, was 9800 over the salary cap. <laughs> they need an extra roster slot. We have to go back to the old, old school right. rosters. right. Somebody in Discord asked if they had moved the salary cap to 70000 which would make more sense with this. But, like, you... So the most expensive player on the slate is Bukayo Saka, who is banged up but takes set pieces for the favored team in the match with a two-and-a-half goal total. Um, so, of course, he's 12-3. And, and you're like, I would never pay that. And then you just keep going down and you're like, oh, I'd never pay that for that guy or that guy or that guy. And then you just wonder, why am I playing this league? Well, I mean, I understand that they do dynamic pricing sometimes because we don't got Man City. We don't got Liverpool. We don't got Chelsea. We don't. So, I mean, you have to make it in comparison to a $50,000 mm-hmm. salary. But even then, like, even then you can't even build a lineup. I mean, we get we we take a look at the forward position. Normally... Normally, 10k and above, or not. I've, I've on my screen. I'm on the desktop. Normally, within one screen, which is like maybe 12 players or mm-hmm. so, 
I could go from the top to like maybe a 7K player. And like, no, I'm going out to 9,200. Like 92, I, I can't even see the $9,000 guy. Christian Benteke is 8,800. Uh, and I'm going, wow, that, that, that may actually be a deal on this slate. Uh, yeah, it, like this, this, to me, the slate is just is grossly mispriced. Um, did you ever think you'd see the day where the dinky do was an $8,800 forward and an $8,600 <laughs> forward? <laughs> Uh, you're, you're almost forced to pay up at forward because there's no, there's no, you have to, you're I mean, forced like, to pay up everywhere. That's the problem. Right. Actually, but I think, I think we could go through this and, and think and think in, in, in relation to one another. So we can't go and go, well, I can't pay that much for that guy. Well, I mean, if you're playing the slate, you're going to have to pay, you're going to pay something for something someone. for someone. So, yeah. right. So it's all going to be in relation to. To one another. So at forward, we got one, two, three, four, five. We got we got seven players that are 10K or above. Saka and Obama Yang for Arsenal. We got Pascal Gross at 11-3, which, as you state, he'll get there no matter what. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pedro Neto, 10-7 for Wolves. And then we got three Crystal Palace players. Three Crystal Palace players are 10K and above. Zaha at 12K, Townsend at 11K, and Easy E at 10-3. Also understand, since they played midweek, that we may see rotation. So mm-hmm. so some of these guys may not be in. You know, Gross may not start. Uh, uh, Townsend may not start. It may be someone else, you know. But even then, you go down to those, you know, it, it doesn't help you any, really, no matter what happens. So in this top range, I mean, we could everyone's in the top range. To me, on this slate, I think in relation to the other teams, Arsenal, outside of maybe Saka, is slightly underpriced, but they're not underpriced. So, like, they're the biggest favorite, but I don't consider them underpriced. But I think, uh, oh, Jesus, it, uh, maybe Wolves are underpriced or probably not also i it's this this slate is nobody's underpriced nobody's nobody even, even really in relation under- like i think i think gross might be the best play up here if he starts oddly enough i mean also you, you, like you're not playing zaha no 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 i, I i'm okay Let, let's just get it at at a at a at Get the elephant out of the room. You're not playing these Crystal Palace players at these prices, unless there's You're not only even one. Playing Easy E at ten three, you wouldn't get out of here. Ten, you wouldn't do it if there was no like if he had mono- a monopoly. Oh, but it would have to be a clear monopoly. Basically, no Townsend, no Milivojevic, no Van Anholt. It would have to be basically him. You look on the field and you go, no McCarthy, no, no. I have no. There's no one on this. There's no one on this pitch. That has ever taken a free kick in the history of Crystal Palace. Like, yes, okay, then I get it. See, even Pascal Gross, if Solly March is out there also, like, then then that splits that up. And then yeah. you got Saka and whether or not Willian's going to be back. And then you don't know that because it's the 3 o'clock game. So if you plug in Willian into your lineup and he doesn't start, like, you're just sitting there and, uh-oh, like, you, you screwed because there's, there's no one to switch to. Right. right, you end up bank. with the with a West Brom forward and right. five thousand on the 6, table. Right, six thousand on the table. Right, of course. Right. So, like, I don't even know if you could do that. So, like, in if anything, if you're planning on possibly playing Willian or Pepe or something like that, you just plug in Obama Yang. Yeah. And then you decide to go and you leave another spot and you go with goalkeeper up and down, or you just leave money on the table. It doesn't matter at this point. Everyone's overpriced. You did. Leaving eight hundred. Why not leave eight hundred on the table? Who right. cares? On, right, on a slate, on a slate where you need uh, eighty thousand in salary, we're like leave a thousand on the table. Who cares? Well, if, well that's the, that. But that's what you have to do if you're going to play yeah. the Arsenal players, right? I mean, they're they're in the late game. It's not like these are three games that start at the same time. Mm-hmm. It would make it so much easier at least then. But now you don't. You get the Crystal Palace game first, then the Wolves Brighton game. So, so what the hell do you do? If I mean. I think there there there's more likely to be midfield, and I'm using this in in quotes value, quote unquote, uh, than there is at forward and defender. 
there, there are definitely values there. Um, before we get there, do you think, because they'll have showdowns for all of these, do you think these are the showdown prices? <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked if they were. Like if they open the showdown slates and these are the prices. It makes it. It actually makes sense. Right. Like a few it's people pointed that out on Twitter, right. and right. I was like, "Oh, that's the... funny." And then I'm like, "Oh, wait a minute. These actually might be them." You you know you know what that's that's just similar to what I said last week with the two slates mm -hmm. when they split it apart. It seems like they did the prices and then they split the slates apart. Yeah, this would make if I if I just went to Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace Sheffield, I would say that. Yeah, I would say that these are like showdown prices. Maybe, I mean, maybe yeah. Some of these fullbacks probably should have been on showdown. Would be maybe a thousand dollars more. Maybe I mean not these. These guys are terrible. Maybe Van Anholt. Right. But even he hasn't been that great. Like good enough to. No, I think he's probably priced appropriately. I think we think he should be better because we've played him when he was better. Anyway. Yeah, but you're right. If I just click on the individual games, it almost feels like I'm playing Showdown. Right. Yep. But we're not playing a classic. Sport. No, right. You're not. You're actually not. Yeah. Doesn't it? Doesn't matter. Who cares? But but most likely at forward, I'm paying up because where else? I mean, you have Carlin Grant if he starts is all the way at the bottom, as the biggest underdog with no floor. And I'd ra I'd rather play I'd rather play a center back than him than fill a forward spot with him. Yeah, I mean, for how how crazy the prices were at the top, I actually went right to the bottom, and I was like, who can I get away with down here? Um, Jahan Bosch at thirty nine hundred, I considered. He played midweek as a um, wing center back forward. and was horrific. No, he played as a center forward. I thought. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Either way, he was horrific. I don't expect horrific. him to start this game. Like, I'm I'm looking down and going, why is David McGoldrick 7,500? Like, this is just ridiculous. That's why you, you almost have to pay up. You almost have to. You're, you're going to be playing. To, to me, the guy the guy that, that looks the best for the price is, is Adama Traore at 8,300. You better hope he starts. Was in the second game. And then, uh, worst case scenario, I play Potence. Right. Yeah, you can do that. Right. I mean, it's not like Potence has a floor, but I mean, no one, I mean, this is ridiculous. Um, but I mean, how, how are you paying? What, are you going to do gross, gross netto? I don't think you can play two of them. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, you barely play one of them. <laughs> there are cheap midfielders, though. Right. And, I mean, we'll get to them, but like, the the f realistic outcomes of the bottom midfielders to the mid range midfielders because you're definitely not getting an expensive midfielder is small enough that like you should just go down like we say that about right, defenders a lot on right but so i think don't have like the high expensive fullbacks. midfielders that you'll pay for there's two of them and I, they're both overpriced like way i mean of course they are <laughs> right of course they i mean they're overpriced so right I'd rather fill the forward spots with the overpriced players and the midfield spots with the overpriced players. Yeah. I think one guy that I think you can play and we get it in the first game is Jordan Ayew if he starts because of all the rotation. That's right. 5,400. Oh, oh, then you start. Sigh of relief. Oh, we only get to play a four-point floor player for 5,400 in the mm -hmm. forward spot. Thank God. Like, I... Like, Strangely, he is appropriately priced. Right. Do, do you think that uh, like Fabio Silva starts up top for the Wolves? He could. He had. I mean, right. He's been but playing. I mean, he would have no floor either. I mean, that would. None. I mean, right. So, to, what does it matter? He may have a Connolly. I mean, we may see some rotation, and maybe we talk about this late as everyone's overpriced, and then Saturday comes around and you see heavy rotation, and half of these guys aren't even in. Yeah, there was pretty significant rotation like midweek, so. I'm just saying I'm I'm looking yeah, for I mean, it's any way I can. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Ninety five hundred for Trossard. I mean what what's going on? Did they think we got our stimulus checks already? 
I don't think 9,500 is that bad if there's no March or... <laughs> it's not that bad, right? You have to, like, put it... It's bad even if that's the case, but in relation to the other players, right. it's not that bad. Right. Like, I think you play Pepe at 82. It's a late game, of course. God, these are so bad. Right, the Arsenal... I wish the Arsenal game was the first game. Right. Right. Then I'd be able to. I'd be able to manage this better. It, it is odd that like all of the floor player floor forwards we always look for are on this slate, and we're like you can't play any of them. Well, well because they're right. You, you can't play any right because, I mean, you can. But you're, yes, you you're can. paying. You're paying. I mean, you're paying. If you want that eight to ten point floor, you're paying eleven k for it. On a slate that could have two goals on it. Right. Which, may, hey, that may be optimal. Mm-hmm. On a slate that has two goals on it total, if you can get 10 points out of every one of your spots on average, you're good. Right. Just Then it, who cares? The winning GPP score of the slate could be 72. I mm-hmm. mean, come on. I mean, it's it's possible. At midfield, though, the two, the two guys to pay up for, quote unquote, would be March and Pereira, right? I mean... They are the guys to do it. Right, but, but, but like, is it worth doing? No. There's no way you pay 9300 for Pereira. Yeah, is the primary set-piece taker on the biggest underdog. Right, on the biggest, right. Right. Solly March will, if Gross is not in, will be the primary set-piece taker playing as a wing back in a pick em type of game. He's 9900 In comparison to the, if March was forward eligible, I'd play him. If Pereira was forward eligible, I'd play him. But midfield, I mean, if you're going to save money anywhere, it's going to be in the midfield because there's no there's no forwards to pay down. But it's like you you could just skip at least half of the midfielders. Like you're like, oh, all right, so Pereira doesn't start. Maybe Krovanovic starts. So like you're not going to pay seventy three hundred for Krovanovic. You're not going to pay sixty two hundred seven hundred for McAllister. Right. You're not going to pay sixty two for Ceballos. Like. Matinho at 58? I can't believe I'm saying it, but, like, why not? Matinho, the difference now with Matinho, though, is that he's playing much deeper in open play. And it's much more of a share of set pieces. Right, because him and Neto will will split them. Yep. But at 5,800 on this slate, it seems like I'm getting a bargain. Right, but the problem is, is that you'll go, like, all right, I'll play him. And then you'll say, like, maybe I can get away with Milivojevic or... Matt Phillips, and then you're like, these guys are cheap. And then you finish your lineup, and you're like, oh, I still need $8,000. Like, right. even these guys aren't cheap enough. Right. Like, Fleck is okay at 5400 Diangana at 4100 I think, and I really never thought I'd ever say this again, I think Xhaka might be okay at 3800 He's fine. And then you got Ben Osborne, 3,300. Yep. That's what I said. These midfields, Ampadu, mm-hmm. 3,200. They they kind of split Osborne and Ampadu. It depends on, or Norwood. I was going to say Norwood at 46 is, right. a, is fine. I'd play him at 4,600. Right. But these are the val- These are the quote values of the slip. But they're in mid, they're, but they're in your midfield spots. Yep. So that's why, yeah, you may be overpaying it forward, but what else are you gonna do? I'm just not sure that there are even two that I want to play. I'm not even sure if I want to play the slate anymore. Right. <laughs> I am. The good news is, is getting us ready for showdown. Is this is this some type of some type of prison experiment? Do you pay sixty eight hundred for Kieran Tierney? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> what are we doing? That's only he's the most expensive. That it's only because Lamptey is out and he's seventy two hundred. He's TAA. Sixty eight hundred. Sixty eight hundred. Are you nuts? Oh, but you could also pay for the underdog fullback uh, furlong for sixty one hundred, mm-hmm. right? Because he's obviously going to be getting forward a lot, being the on the biggest underdog, right? 
it makes, news it, is, makes Be- it makes Bellerman, a uh, Beller Bellerin at forty six hundred, almost feel like a deal. Furlong, like we t- have had played Furlong previously. Like he crossed some, and uh, his last four games crosses one, zero, five, and one, and the five came at Liverpool. But he's and he's sixty one hundred. Um, I don't. I think it's perfectly fine to just go all the way to the bottom, and play two starters. Like, yeah, if you want to play Semi Ajayi well, at twenty five hundred, if, if Max Lowe gets in, sure, he, he rotates in. He's twenty five hundred. There sure. you go. He's an actual full, like wing back. You play the corpse of Branislav Ivanovic. Yeah. Who, for whatever reason, had to come in for Matt Phillips' last game. I, I don't know how that, that substitution happens, but it happened. Yeah, I think if you want to spend $5,000 on two defenders, I think that might end up being optimal. And one of those defenders, if I know he got scratched the last game, screw it, you just take Kieran Gibbs. How much is he now? Ninety five thousand. Oh, oh, twenty seven. No, I don't. Two hundred too expensive. No thanks. If it was mint price, you'd do it. No, I don't know. I probably wouldn't even do it. Right. This is one of those things where I now have to like stay on brand enough that if he like becomes a fantastic player, and I just have to just be like, no, I'll never play him again. Right. You'll take you'll take Johnny, who's out, before you play him. Yeah. Exactly. I just don't see like anyone between. The twenty five hundred dollar guys, and fifty one hundred, they're all the same. Like from Semedo down. Semedo, I think, is fine. Um, and anyone in between them and yeah, the min price guys are. There's no reason to. Right, there's like a one point floor difference. That's it. That's it. That's all. So why not save the two thousand? There could be a one point ceiling difference. That's absolutely correct. Also, so that's why you should just go all the way down so that you can pay uh, twenty four thousand dollars for Pascal Gross and Wilfred Zaha. <laughs> uh, but like, I mean, we talk about how like you don't necessarily have to prioritize defenders on certain slates. This is one of them. Actually, let me rephrase that. I think you prioritize the cheap, the cheapest ones possible. Okay. I just don't see any benefit to the guys who are more expensive other than lineup differentiation. And even then, I'm not sure that's important. Uh, our, uh, uh, we're paying up for a goalkeeper, right? Uh, obviously. <laughs> we have the money, obviously. <laughs> Pay up a goalkeeper. How is that going to happen? Um, I think Rams. I think Ramsdale is going to be the most popular goalkeeper. Uh, he's sure. only three hundred more than John Stone. And if you're paying those Crystal, if, if all those guys are in, I'm not playing anyone on Crystal Palace. Yep. I was wrong. John Stone wasn't minus five and a half. It was minus 5.8. <laughs> well, that was the only way I won cash games last night. Because I didn't play John Stone. I lost cash games because of it. Right. Well, that that was the... Di- I mean, really, the cash <clears throat> last slate was the difference of goalkeeper. The Every goalkeeper on the slate, other than John Stone, either got a clean sheet or only gave up one goal. Right. And he gave up five and made zero saves. Oh, two saves. My apologies. And the breaks when you play those min price goalkeepers. Mm-hmm. That could happen. Um, I'll be honest. I I thought Leno might be eight thousand. <laughs> I'm this is not even not even kidding. Like I really was like the prices are all so off that clearly the goalkeeper pricing must be really off too. But fifty six hundred. Um, Seems right even for showdown, like because like Arsenal's not that big of a favorite. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I was actually I was surprised that they got at least the most important position correctly. Right, right. The thing that matters the least, they got the no, no, no. They got that correct. Matters the most. 
Oh, it, yeah, it matters the most, but it you can't predict, so it doesn't even yeah. matter. Right. Like, I, I love the way that you always put that. Like, goalkeeper, uh, choose whoever you want. Just understand it's the most important decision. It's the most. It's the least important decision, but it's the most impactful on your exactly. World. I had somebody ask me the other day why I played Johnstone, and I think it was after the slate. Uh, and they were like, "So how do you how do you pick goalkeeper?" And I was like, uh, I, "I just take the one that fit." Um, that's it. And they were like, "But like, did you think that he had a good?" And I'm like, "I didn't think anything. I thought I have 4,200 left, and he fit, and I wasn't gonna like change the rest of my lineup." For a goalie, I had one, I had a two v two earlier that um, allowed me to pay up for Ramsdale, who also didn't win, but at least didn't get. What did he end up with? Two, so seven, three. So he had eight eight points better, better than the guy I picked, almost nine. Um, but they were like, but but you had to have thought that. They, and I'm like, no, there was no thought. There was no. And they were like, but but it's like an important position. I'm like, yeah, really important. Clearly, I just got blasted because my guy had minus five point eight. And they're like, I, why don't you think about it more? I'm like, <laughs> what is there to think there's, about? There's no, there's no, there's no EV there. I mean, the, you're never going to be able to tell. It's the same thing this past NFL slate. It's like, uh, who fit in my who fit in my defense in my defense? Texans, one hundred dollars cheaper was the Panthers. Yep. Texans minus four. Panthers twenty one. Twenty one. That yeah. was a twenty five point <laughs> decision, but. If you you can't predict, there's no predictability. There's yeah. all, it's an entire variance fest there. So that that's that's the thing. If you're new, I don't know why you'd be new. If you're new to the podcast, if you're new to DFS soccer, the goalkeeper position is, woo! I mean, <laughs> the 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 cheapest goalkeeper could could give up three goals and be the highest scoring goalkeeper, mm-hmm. right? And the high priced goalkeeper could give up one goal and be the lowest scoring goalkeeper. Yeah, well, so I was thinking of, like, trying to write about, like, why why it's so difficult to project goalkeeper pri- or outcomes. And it's not, that wasn't even really the point of the article. It was more just trying to show people, like, these are the actual range of outcomes. Like, this is what has happened with goalie throughout the season. Um, and then comparing them to the other positions. But the problem is, um, so if you look at the top forwards on a slate, let's just say it's a relatively normal slate and the top ones are around 25 and the last, the, but the problem is the bottom ones are at like two. So that's a goalkeeper range, right? Like a goalkeeper could have 25 of, of course, goalkeepers go to minus 5.8. Like you're not, you cannot be an outfield player and get that score unless you commit like four fouls and get sent off in five minutes. Like it just, it cannot happen. So it can happen, but it is almost statistically impossible to happen. The problem is that you have potentially 20 forwards that make up that group, whereas there are only eight uh, goalkeepers that do it. So like the variance even per player is so much higher because they you need eight players to get this range instead of 20. And I'm like, I, I'm just going to get angry writing about this. And so let me just plug in John Stone and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Right. I mean, but that's goalkeeper. That's I mean, that's that is what it is. Mm-hmm. But also it's much easier to project shots and goals for forwards than it is to project saves for goalkeepers. Mm-hmm. Because like there could be, oh, you're facing a team that's taking a lot of shots. But if it's off target, you don't get the goalkeeper doesn't get any points for that. Right. Right. So it's like, how do you project shots on target? Like, but even like I you mean, could look. You were saying that like the most expensive keeper, you know, they give up one goal and they're the lowest scoring one. It's like, and it happens on a penalty. So like the only shot they give up an entire game is a penalty. It goes in. So now he's at minus two because he doesn't make the save. And like you're dead. 5,800 and you're dead. Right. Right. The, the, you're pay, the, the reason you pay up at goalkeepers for winning clean sheet equity. Mm-hmm. And the reason you pay down a goalkeeper is for save upside. But the confluence of those two things in one slate could be who who knows who knows over the course if you plotted goalkeeper scoring over the course of a very large sample size, the prices are are efficient. Yes, because the higher price goalkeepers will get the win and clean sheet more often than. But if they don't get the win and clean sheet, they're the 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 high price goalkeepers are typically not going to score six, eight. Mm-hmm. Like they're not going to score that because it's very rare that. 
that they give up a goal and then also have five or six saves because they're typically in the favored position. So when the underdog team scores, they bunker and the goalkeeper doesn't see any shots anymore. Right. So you're paying for the, well, if it's a wooden clean sheet, he'll have 10, 12, 14, maybe something like that. Very rarely 22. Right. But the low and the, and the low price goalkeepers are the ones that rarely, rarely have 12 or 14. Right. Occasionally they'll have 26 because they have a win clean sheet and 18, you know, like right. the underdog team just is able to hold them out. But a lot of times they give up two goals, have five saves, right? They end up with six points and it's like, well, that's, you know, that's the, it. That's all you need. Right. If you, did, if you did projections on goalkeepers, you'll see that the highest rejected goalkeeper will have seven and a half and the lowest rejected goalkeeper have a median of four and a half. Mm-hmm. And like, that's, like, and that would be accurate. It's just in the course of one slate. The same thing for defense and NFL for touchdowns. Right. Right. The higher price defenses, if you plotted it on a line over the course of thousands of games, that they're worth it. Just on the variance of one slate is, who knows? Yeah. It's also a significant, like, at least a 2v2. Like, if you're paying up for a goalkeeper, then you obviously have to pay down somewhere else because you. That's what happens when you pay up at a position. I think the worst part is that paying up, like if you go into a slate and you're like, I'm paying up for goalkeeper because I know this is a win clean. I'm so confident in it. You're like, I'm locking in 12. And I'm like, <laughs> why am I only locking in 12? I'll just play Pascal Gross. Who cares? Right, right. This it's, is how bad this slate is with the pricing. We just spent five minutes talking about goalkeepers. And it was the most informative part of the podcast, I think. Right. Well, other than other than to get your wallets out, get your wallets out. Go said go, go go to your couch and get the the coins and the cushions because you're gonna need it in order to spend the money on the, the salaries this late. Uh, we also had that entire conversation. We're like, oh, by the way, play whoever you want. Oh yeah, yeah, play whoever you want on goalkeeper at least. All right. Anybody has any follow for Jordan, you can find him on Twitter at Blenderhead. That's Blender HD. I'm at Rotowire Andrew. Thank you to our sponsor, So Rare, for sponsoring this podcast. So Rare is a global fantasy football game where you can collect and scout officially licensed cards of football players. You can compose your teams with your cards and play in weekly tournaments. If you're a skilled manager and ranked well, you can win money and additional cards. So Rare is partnered with over 100 clubs worldwide, including Paris Saint Germain, Juventus, and Bayern Munich. Also recently added Real Madrid. Visit SoRare.com, that's S-O-R-A-R-E.com, to sign up or use the link in our episode description to receive 10 free cards. Jordan, thank you for all that. Happy New Year, and good luck on Saturday.